My name is Tan Kin Lian. I want to speak a few words about jobs for Singaporeans. People need a job to earn an income so that they can raise a family and uh, meet the cost of living. Uh, in recent years, many PMETs have lost their job uh, due to retrenchment. Uh, the PMETs are the professionals, managers, executives, and technical people. These are the higher level jobs. And uh, they try to look for another job. Uh, they find that uh, employers prefer to employ foreigners. Uh, in some cases, they lost their job uh, to foreign workers. Uh, we also have, in recent years, uh, many graduates who find it difficult to get a job. Uh, I've recently done a survey uh, and I found that uh, unemployment, getting a job, is the top concern. Losing a job to foreigners is the top concern of many uh, Singaporeans. Uh, this concern is higher than the cost of living or the cost of health care. Now, the, um, the government has actually been aware about this problem for several years. In 2013, I think, uh, they created the Fair Consideration Framework. Uh, this set out a number of practices uh, to ensure that jobs are uh, non-discriminatory and people are employed fairly. But one of the uh, factors, one of the strategy, uh, is to require employers uh, to give preference to look for a local worker before they apply for a work pass to engage a, a foreign worker. Now that means uh, they should show that uh, they can't get a local worker before they employ a foreign worker. And this is done through the job bank. The employer has to uh, advertise the job in the job bank for at least 14 days uh, for uh, locals to apply. And if they can't get a local, then they can apply to the Ministry of Manpower for permission to uh, get a work pass for a foreign worker. However, uh, this uh, job bank doesn't seem to be working well uh, because uh, many local workers have applied for jobs. Uh, they say they never, well, they apply many times for a job. Uh, they never get any reply. They never get called for any interview. Now, the government didn't publish any statistics about the number of jobs given to local workers uh, through the job bank, but uh, most people suspect that the results are very poor. So this fair consideration framework, the job bank doesn't seem uh, to be uh, achieving its goal. Now, in order to solve the problem about employment of local workers, uh, we need to understand the root cause. We must admit, employers prefer foreign workers. And why? Uh, there are a few factors. First, uh, the foreign workers are prepared to work for a lower salary. And the second factor uh, is uh, the employer and the worker don't have to contribute to Central Provident Fund. Also, uh, the local work, the foreign workers are not called up for national service reservist training. And this could be quite disruptive for certain jobs. And the final factor is the foreign worker uh, cannot job hop. They have to stay with the same employer. So we have here uh, four important reasons uh, why employers prefer foreign workers and why local workers will find it difficult to get jobs. And this has been happening uh, for many years. 
is getting worse. Now, uh, I want to make two strategies. I want to suggest two strategies to overcome this, uh, this problem. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, be quite clear. If we don't uh, make a drastic change to the way we do things, uh, we are not going to solve the problem. And the unemployment of local workers will get worse. So we need important strategies uh, to, to make a change. Now, the first strategy concerns the public sector. Uh, the public sector would include jobs like nurses, uh, teachers, uh, police officers, including auxiliary police, and uh, even public transport, bus and train drivers. So for the public sector, uh, we must make a point that all these jobs will be reserved for local workers. Now, if the public sector cannot get local workers for this job, it means that their wages are too low. So we need to then raise the wages to a level that will attract local workers. Now, uh, uh, we should not allow uh, the public sector uh, to depress the wages through outsourcing. Uh, for example, the uh, auxiliary police is being outsourced and foreigners are being employed as auxiliary police. Uh, if we raise the wages, I'm sure local workers uh, will be interested in these jobs. Now, besides uh, paying higher wages, we should look into some degree of flexibility. Uh, for example, uh, uh, there are many locals who don't mind to be taxi drivers or Uber and Grab drivers. Uh, they work hard, uh, they earn uh, a reasonable income. But the reason why they prefer to be uh, taxi or, uh, or Uber Grab drivers is it gives them the flexibility. Now, the same person could be working as a bus driver, uh, but, but he doesn't want to be a bus driver because the schedule is too rigid. So we must give to certain jobs like bus driver some degree of flexibility uh, so that uh, 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 to them, they can earn a good wage, they can have, a, have some flexibility. Then we can employ uh, all the uh, drivers from, from locals that means uh, they don't need, we don't need to have foreigners from other countries to be our bus drivers. Now, this degree of flexibility can be given today. With modern technology, we have this app. Uh, so with a mobile app, you can choose the time slots that you want. And the time slot you don't want, there will be other workers who are interested in this time slot. So uh, if we insist that all public sector jobs should be reserved for locals, the wages will have to go up. We have to provide some degree of flexibility and that can be an important source of employment uh, for our local workers. Now I will come to the other sector, which is the private sector. Now the private sector is competitive. Every employer needs to keep the cost low so that they can survive in business. And this competitiveness is more important in those uh, industries which are export-oriented. Uh, so we need to find a strategy to keep uh, the cost uh, low, the business cost low for employers. And now this can be done. Uh, now, employers prefer foreign workers uh, because they get, they are willing to work for lower wages. And they are willing to work for lower wages because they feed the family in their home country where the cost is lower. Uh, local workers, uh, local employees uh, would prefer, uh, would need to raise their family in Singapore and the cost of living is higher. So they need higher wages. So if uh, nothing is done, uh, then of course employers will prefer foreign workers. Uh, now, uh, this quota, you can have so many foreign workers for 
work against so many local workers. Uh, it's one way of addressing this, but it's not working that well. Uh, I would suggest that we should have a system of equalizing the wages. Uh, now, we know a foreign worker is willing to accept less compared to a local worker because of the difference in the cost of living. So, the employers will have to pay a levy for every foreign worker and the employer should get a subsidy for every local, lo local worker. So, after adjusting for the levy and the subsidy, the employer cost of employing a local worker compared to the foreign worker should be about the same. Now, of course, the government has already done, adopted this strategy. They, have, they require uh, the employer to pay a levy for a foreign worker in the lower category, that is the work permit and the s pass. But I cannot understand why the exam employer from paying the levy for the higher level. Uh, this is the employment pass. Uh, this is the category uh, which uh, compete with our PMET, our professionals, managers, executive and technical. And the employment pass holders now, their employer don't have to pay any levy. Uh, this is ridiculous. I don't know why this uh, is allowed to happen. And I would think one important step is get employers to pay a levy for e-pass as well. Now, of course, uh, there are other factors that make employers prefer to employ foreigners, such as job hopping and the national service reservist duty. But I think these factors probably uh, doesn't matter that much. The most important must be the cost. Uh, if you equalize the cost uh, by imposing a levy on all categories of foreign workers and giving a meaningful wage subsidy to the employer to employ a local worker, uh, the chance of the private sector uh, employing locals uh, will be much better. Now, there are advantages in employing local workers uh, for many jobs, uh, whether it is in the public sector, public service, or even in the private sector. A local worker knows the local languages. They know the local custom. They know the local places. So this would be uh, much more advantageous. They, we can provide better service uh, to the public at large, to the rest of the population, if we give jobs to local workers instead of employing foreign workers. Now I want to address the question about uh, graduates. Uh, of course, uh, uh, many graduates are, are able to get a good job, uh, but some may take a few months to find a good job. But increasingly, and in recent years, more and more graduates are finding it difficult to get a job. Some waited for one, two years, still can't get a job. And this proportion is increasing, higher. Now, this is a problem that we must address. And the root cause of this problem is, there is an imbalance. We are having too many graduates and not enough jobs for graduates. On the other hand, we have many other jobs that can't find workers. And the reason is, to, uh, uh, there's a perception that the wage of a graduate is much higher than the wage for a non-graduate job. And this gap uh, should be narrowed if we are going to have a proper balance between the jobs uh, and the workers for those jobs. Now, I want to quote the example of Germany. Uh, in Germany, and I saw this uh, uh, 30 over years ago when I visited an ins uh, insurance company there, I learned about their apprenticeship system. Uh, now, uh, uh, every year, some of the, a certain proportion of the school leavers will go to university. 
but a high proportion will come to work uh, in the industry, even in the financial sector. The company I visited is an insurance company. And I was told that they have school leavers who come to work under a four-year apprenticeship system. And during this time as apprentice, they earn a small allowance, but they uh, spend half the time doing the actual work in the office. Answer the telephone, uh, data entry, uh, serving customers and so on. And they spend the other half the time attending insurance school. Now, after four years, when they graduate, when they complete their apprenticeship, uh, at the same time, there will be the graduates coming out of the university, same time. The salary between the graduate and the skilled apprentice, the gap is, I'm told, about 10%. So, if the gap is small, only 10%, Many people who are not academically minded, they don't mind to come and work as apprentice, whether in the office or in the factory or uh, in the service trade. They acquire meaningful skills. They are very good in their work. They understand the business. They understand the industry they are in. Uh, that's why today, Germany is one of the uh, most competitive countries, in spite of being high cost, they are very productive and competitive because they have provide, uh, they, they provide a very good apprenticeship system to develop the skill of a large proportion of their workforce. Now, we must recognize that uh, it is not good to have too many people becoming graduates who are not properly uh, using their knowledge. And we have too many jobs that require other people and these jobs are not being filled uh, because the skill for those jobs are, uh, are not there. So we need to have a more, uh, uh, more drastic changes in our wage structure uh, so that uh, our economy can be more uh, the workforce can be more efficiently used. Now, I would therefore like to summarize uh, to solve the problem of our jobs of Singaporeans, uh, we need the government to adopt a more holistic approach. First, they must make sure all public sector jobs are reserved for local workers, uh, local employees, many PMET, they must be reserved. They must raise the wages to the level that is needed and they can provide some flexibility. Uh, and uh, for the uh, private sector, uh, we must have this effective system to equalize the wage cost of a local worker against a foreign worker. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, levy and the subsidy system should be made more effective but over the longer term, we must bring down the cost of living, the cost of doing business in Singapore. We need to recognize Singaporeans are willing to work hard, to study hard, to acquire the skill, and uh, they are not lazy. And if they, are, they, they work hard, they have the skill, uh, they should be confident they can get a job. And making sure that they get a job is the duty of the government. And I hope that our government will recognize that the current approach is not working well uh, and that they must revise their approach so that uh, uh, our workers, our employers, our, uh, uh, the, the people in Singapore, Singaporeans, can have, have the confidence that uh, they can get a job uh, that will allow them to raise a family. Thank you.